fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. You know, there's one snack that youngsters from 6 to 60 go for, and that's a chocolate fudge brownie, especially when they're perfect brownies, like the kind you'll bake with Betty Crocker chocolate fudge brownie mix. So easy that the youngsters can turn out a perfect batch with no trouble at all. The finest ingredients are right in the mix, including soft as silk cake flour, pure vegetable shortening, and rich chocolate flavoring. You just add water and eggs, add nuts if you like, blend and bake. Mmm, fudgy and chewy brownies that will fill a whole cookie jar. Each package of Betty Crocker brownie mix turns out 36 perfect brownies. They're such a treat for a family dessert topped with vanilla ice cream or for a snack when you invite your friends over in the afternoon. Ask your mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker brownie mix on hand. And someday soon, why not surprise her and bake up a batch of delicious brownies? For extra freshness, keep them in the cookie jar. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll sell it. Late one night, Marshal Tom Coleman drew rein in front of Sheriff Hank Reno's lighted office in the town of Sundance. Oh, oh, yeah. He dismounted awkwardly, then limped to the office door. <laughs> Glad you keep late hours, Hank. Ah, Tom Coleman, how are you? All right. But I have a game leg. Yeah. What happened? I stopped a bullet. Sit down, Tom. All right, thanks. You wait here, Tom. I'll get Doc Simmons to come take care of you. Never mind the Doc. An engine did as good a job for me as he could. The wound will be all right in a few days. Meantime, I have a job to do. I'll need your help. Just tell me who gunned you and I'll go after him. A tin horn named Shag Roscoe did the shooting. But I'm after more than that gunslinger this trip, Hank. What do you mean? I'm working under special orders from the governor. The, the governor? Yeah, a gang known as the Hooded Raiders have been operating west of here. I've heard of that outfit. You're lucky you've never seen them in action. Have you? Only once. They move fast. And there's more than enough men in the gang to make sure no one causes trouble for them. They've pulled a lot of big robberies. The governor hired some ex-railroad detectives to spy on the gang. One of them, a fellow named Hex Norton's, joined the outfit. If the gang finds out who he is, it'll cost him his life. Maybe he's already dead. Huh? We haven't heard from him since the gang moved their hideout three weeks ago. Uh, the bad. last word we had from him was a message saying he'd done what I asked. What's that? I asked him to arrange things so Roscoe would be offered a chance to join the Raiders. Why? Well, I was watching Shag. I knew where to find him. And I figured I could trail a skunk to the raider's hiding place. As things stand now, you'll never find the hideout. I wounded Roscoe. He'll travel hard to reach the hideout, and he might not take time to cover his tracks. Why, I said he... So if you round up a posse of 20 or 25 men you can trust, we'll follow his tracks from the place where he ambushed me. But you're wounded, Tom. You ought to stay here and take it easy. I'm riding with you. And the sooner we get started, the better I'll like it. All right, you're running this job. I'll go round up the boys. Shag Roscoe, the outlaw Marshal Tom Coleman wounded, had continued on his way to the hideout of the hooded raiders. But the wound in his shoulder forced him to travel slowly. By midnight, he was four hours from his destination and too tired to go on without rest. Oh, oh there, oh. He oh. drew rein in the Apache Hills, 
and by the light of a brilliant moon, studied a map he took from his pocket. Yeah. No matter how I figure, it'd take at least four hours, maybe longer at the rate I'm going. Easy now. <laughs> As he dismounted wearily, the pain of his wounded shoulder became more intense. Gritting his teeth, he unrolled his blanket. Then, leaving his horse tethered to a nearby tree, Shag Roscoe tried to sleep. Uh, shoulder. I'll get him for this. Uh, uh. The night was cold, but perspiration beat at Shag's forehead as he tossed feverishly, unaware of the fact that his wound had become infected. daybreak, he was roused by the sound of approaching hoofs. Hey, what the... Snatching his gun from its holster, he lurched to his feet. Oh! The sudden movement brought an involuntary cry from his lips as a stabbing pain from his wounded shoulder shot through him. At that moment, he saw the Lone Ranger and Tonto approaching his camp. At the sight of the masked man and Tonto, he sighed with relief. At least it's not the law. Oh, You're both covered. Oh, I see. I've heard that engines are mighty good at taking care of wounds. Well, what about it? Hey. Stuck a bullet in my shoulder. I need help. Is this guy easy, fella? Let me take a look at that wound. Easy, silly big fella. The gun away, Roscoe. Uh, You'll not need it. Hey, you know me. I've seen your face on handbills. I'd have been smart enough to keep my face covered like you do. I might not have been described on handbills. Uh, me cut shirt from wound. You sit here. Yeah. Uh, I did what I could to take care of the wound, but I didn't have any medicine or anything. I told you to drop your gun, Shag. Yeah. Might as well. I reckon I'm with friends. Yeah, you're wrong. Huh? We're not on your side of the law. We're taking you to Sundance for shooting Marshal Tom Coleman. How do you know I shot him? We met him at the scene of the ambush. He told us all about it. Are you lying? He wouldn't trust a masked man? After he saw the credentials I carry, he trusted me. Why, well, you two. Don't try it. I'll get you. No! Oh! oh, I'm hit. You shot me. My bullet oh. smashed your gun. I thought you were a law dodger. You're not the first man to make that mistake. I'll keep him covered, Toto, while you examine the wound. Me cut shirt. Uh, easy, huh? Oh. What? What's wrong? You look at wound, Kimasabi. All right. Mighty ugly looking. Huh? It infected. Well, what's that mean? Will I die? No, you not die. But you suffer plenty pain. Oh, take it easy. Me sorry, me sorry, but we have to clean wounds. If I ever get my hands on the law dog or gun me, oh! oh. Sopping with pain, oh. Jack Roscoe Did alternately screamed and moaned as Toto oh. deftly cleansed and bandaged oh, the no. wound with snowy white gauze. <laughs> when the task was finished, the Indian tied Shag's hands with leather thongs as the Lone Ranger studied the letter and map he had taken from the disarmed outlaw. So this is where the Hooded Raiders are hiding. What do you know about the Hooded Raiders? The only thing I didn't know was where to find them. Thanks to you, I've got the information. Uh, what letter say? The gang's expecting Shag Roscoe. Yeah, and there'll be plenty of trouble when I don't show up. As far as the gang knows, you will show up. Huh? Yeah. I'm going in your place. You... You'll be shot on sight. Uh, him right, Kimasabi. By darkening my skin and faking a scar like Shag's, I may be able to fool those crooks. You take plenty big risks. Well, I change my appearance, you study the map of the hideout, Tonto. Then when you take Shag to the law in Sundance, explain the situation to the sheriff. And Tom Coleman, if he's there. Ah, uh, me sabi. Ask the sheriff to raise a posse and ride to the hideout. I'll be there waiting for him, with the gang. You'll not live long enough to see the posse, mister... You'll be killed as soon as you ride into the hideout. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Right, that's something champions know everywhere, wherever you go. Take Parbust and Sammy Sneed, born in old Virginia. Slam and Sam has been up on top for years and eaten his Wheaties regularly. And Al Rosen, born in sunny South Carolina, clutch hitter with the Cleveland Indians. There's Al at the plate. Here's a pitch. 
Another solid sock for a solid champ. And say Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties for 23 baseball seasons. That's the way it goes. South, North, East, West, Wheaties. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. 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 Now to continue. A short time later, disguised as the outlaw Shag Roscoe, the Lone Ranger left Tonto to take the prisoner to Sundance. The Indian helped Shag mount his horse. Then they started for town. Get up there. Get him up. Oh. Two hours later, Marshal Coleman and the hard-riding posse with him saw Tonto approaching with his prisoner. The Marshal signaled a halt. Oh, 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 oh. He turned to Sheriff Reno and said, Doggone it, Hank, I'm glad to see that Indian. He looks like he's got a prisoner. The man with him is Shag Roscoe. That crook. The Indian's named Tonto. Oh, I know Tonto. I worked with him in the Lone Ranger. Now I know I didn't make a mistake when I trusted that masked man. Oh, oh, there. Oh, 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 Hi there, Tonto. I see you got the skunk. Isn't that right, Marshal Coleman? Me on way to town with him. How, Sheriff Reno? I'm glad to see you, Tonto. I'm downright glad you got this fellow here. Yeah, but I was counting on him to lead us to the hideout of the Hooded Raiders. Lone Ranger on way to hideout now, Marshal. What? Him find map in Outlaw's pocket. Map show way to hideout. Oh, that's bad. What's bad about it? Hex Norton, the ex-railroad detective I told you about who joined the gang, will know the Lone Ranger's not Shag Roscoe. Hmm. Hex talked the leader in the sending for Shag. Why him do that? Well, Hex knew I was watching Roscoe. The plan was for me to follow the skunk, pick up a posse on the way, and close in on the hideout to clean up the whole gang. Sounds like a good plan to me, Tom. I'll send a couple of the boys back to town with the prisoner while we go on to the hideout. We'll go on, all right, but Tonto's partner might be dead by the time we get there. Lone Ranger disguised himself to look like Shank Roscoe. No matter how good his disguise is, Hex Norton will know he's an imposter. Without realizing who he is, Norton might get him into a lot of trouble. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Shag? You've outsmarted yourself, Marshal. The spy you planted in the gang might kill the Lone Ranger. Shut up. It'll take more than you and a masked manhunter to capture the hooded raiders. I've men enough with me to get every one of those crooks. That's what you think, Lord Dog. You're talking mighty big for a prisoner, Shag. You think you'll be able to take the gang by surprise? Well, let me tell you, you can't. They'll have guards and lookouts posted near the hideout. They'll see you coming before you reach the place. And they'll be ready for you. You won't have a chance to draw your gun. You think he's right, Tom? You better turn back while you've got the chance. No, you'll not turn back. Lone Ranger need help. He'll need plenty of help. What? Don't let this two-bit gunslinger scare you, Hank. He might be right. And he might be wrong. I don't Either know way, that. we can't let the Lone Ranger face that gang single-handed. Why risk your lives to save his heart? You said enough, Shag. Slim, you and Nap take the prisoner back to Sundance. Right, Sheriff. Come on, Shag. All right. Yeah, come on, boy. Come on. You Get can't stay. I didn't warn you. Tonto, will you be able to follow the Lone Ranger's tracks? Me not have to follow, Marshal. Him show me map. Me no way to hide out. Then let's get going. Right. Come on, boy. Get him up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Two hours after Tonto met the posse, the Lone Ranger, disguised as Shag Roscoe, approached high bluffs that walled the canyon-like entrance to the hideout of the hooded raiders. As the great horse Silver neared the opening, a lookout fired a warning shot. Go, Ranger! Oh, Silver, oh! I'll move this way slowly. Keep the hands high. Very well. Come on, boy. That's fair enough. Who's over who? Who are you? I'll answer questions when I talk to the leader of this outfit. Where is he? You'll not see him till I know who you are. What's your business here? This letter identifies me. Here, read it. The lookout advanced cautiously and took the letter. A glance at the handwriting convinced him that the newcomer was to be trusted. Well, why didn't you tell me you're the new man? Glad to know you, Shag. Thanks. Go on through the pass. Someone inside will tell you where to find the boss. Right. Come on, big fellow. And while you're there, tell Hex Norton it's time for him to take over here. Very well. (laughs) 
As Silver walked through the narrow paths, the Lone Ranger realized that the hooded raiders had chosen an ideal place of concealment. Walls of rock completely concealed the hideout from the view of riders on the other side of the entrance. And with a lookout to stand guard and sound a warning, there was little chance that the outlaws could be surprised. As he drew rein near a row of army tents, two heavily bearded men approached. Keep your hands away from your guns, stranger. Who's the leader of this outfit? I am. And you're the man who sent for me. So you're Shag Rasko. What about it? Don't you recognize your old pal, Hex Norton? How are you, Hex? Downright surprised to see you. You shouldn't be. You knew I sent for him? Yeah, but he's changed since I saw him last. What do you mean? That scar on his face. It's a recent one. It must be. You sure he's all right, Hex? Yeah, he'll do. Good enough. Hit the ground, Shag, and I'll show you around. Thanks. Easy, steady. Hey, Hex, it's your turn to stand guard. The lookout told me to tell you you're late. I'll change places with him now. See you later, Shag. Right. Come on. I'll introduce you to the rest of the boys. I'm looking forward to meeting you. A short time later, the outlaw leader guided the disguised Lone Ranger to the lookout point outside the hideout. Boys, take turns as lookouts. We keep a 24-hour watch here. Are you afraid the law might find you? <laughs> the law will never take us by surprise. What's he think of the setup, boss? He thinks it's first rate. Yeah, it's well planned. I've got big plans, Shaggy. One of these days, every crook in the Southwest will be under my thumb. A run crime in this part of the country. That's easier said than done. I have money, guns, and men enough to do it right now. Come on, Shag. We'll get back and join the boy. Now let him stay with me a while, boss. I'd like to talk to him. Suit yourself. I'll see you later. Right. What's your game, mister? What? You're not Shag Roscoe. No? I know that two-bit tin horn anywhere. You waited a long time to show your hand. Why didn't you tell your boss the fact? Don't reach for your gun. You're covered. Oh. What's your next move? You'll answer the questions. Where's Shag? He'll not be here. Is he dead? He's on his way to jail. Jail? That's right. Hey, who are you? No one you've ever met before. Well, you're in trouble, strangers. Who are you, Hicks? Hey, what? Why didn't you tell me there's champions in Roscoe? Oh, oh stop. stop that gun and get your hands up. That's pretty. I didn't know you were listening, Hood. I stopped behind those rocks to hear what you two would say. I'm not as blunt as you thought, Hicks. This gent didn't even know you until I told him who you were. Why hold that against me? If you'd have been on the level, you'd have told me he wasn't Roscoe. I wanted to find out what his game was. Right now, I'm more interested in yours. I've been watching you mighty close since we moved to this hideout. Why watch me? Because I think you're working with the law. As the enraged outlaw leader moved closer to Hex Norton, the Lone Ranger's hands dropped to his holsters. A split second later, he held his cold. Stop the gun, Hood. Why are you got him, Hex? Right. I told you, loco Johnny. I had his gun. Boys, help! I take it. Oh. Yeah, good work. You keep quiet now. That was a knockout blow. Tie his hands and gag him while he's unconscious. Right. Then you'd better tell me what side of the law you're on. Yeah. How do I know I can trust you? Are you working with this gang or against it? Hood was right. I've been working against him. He's been watching me so close, I haven't been able to get word to Marshal Coleman. So but... that's how Coleman knew Shag was coming to the hideout. Hey, you... You mean you know Coleman? Yes. Well, there. Put hands and feet are tied in that bandana. I'll keep him quiet. By this time, my Indian friend Toto must have reached Sundance with Shag Roscoe. he bring the law here. There's 20 killers in the gang, mister. It'll take a lot of lawmen to handle them. And... Hey, look. Right, is heading this way. Yeah. Tunnel's in the lead. And there's Marshal Coleman and Sheriff Reno. They're coming here, Hex. The good thing we're on guard, not some of the other boys. The way Marshal Coleman and his men through the pass and take the gang by surprise. Right. <laughs> All right, they see our signal. Come on, Hex, we'll join the fight. I'm with you. A few moments later, the lawmen swept through the pass. The surprised outlaws were caught in the open. At first, they traded shots with the marshal, the sheriff, and the posse. Then the Lone Ranger and Hex joined the fight, firing into the ranks of the crooks. From the protection of rocks and boulders, the outlaws couldn't reach. 
As one raider after another went down under the devastating fire, the rest raised their hands. You and Hank and I'll keep these skunks covered while the rest of the boys put handcuffs on them. Uh, where's the boss? Uh, he must have cleared out. Uh, Mercer, Mercer, hold it. Hex, I've been looking for you. Who's the leader of this gang? He's tied and gagged and ready for the trip to jail, what? Sheriff. Great day alive, mister. I'm glad you're all right. I was afraid Hex Norton would know you weren't Shag Roscoe. The disguise he's wearing is mighty good, but it didn't fool me, Marshal. I thought it wouldn't. Too bad you didn't tell me Hex Norton was working with you, Marshal. I had no way of knowing you'd wind up here, mister. Norton's an ex-railroad detective. And I'd be a dead one right now if this fella hadn't pulled a gun on Hood. Why, what happened? Well, it's a long story, Marshal. I'll tell you about it later. You men enough with you to handle these prisoners, haven't you, Marshal Coleman? More than enough. We'll have no trouble getting them to Sundance. And Todd and I will be on our way. Well, be ready, Kimasabi. Adios, Marshal. Adios. Goodbye, Sheriff. Adios. Adios. Goodbye. I'm glad you got here in time to capture the gang. <laughs> Thanks for your help. You're more than welcome. Easy, steady, big fella. Hey, wait a minute. They can't hear you, Hex. But dead red, and I don't know that man's name. And with the disguise he's wearing, I don't even know what he looks like. You needn't worry about that. But if I see him again, I won't know him. If you're lucky enough to meet him again, he'll be wearing a mask. Uh, a mask? That's right. He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.